What's going on everybody? Sean Pierce Johnson here. I am so excited to welcome you guys to this episode of Stompbox Saturday. It's very special because we have a special guest in the studio. It is Mr. Thomas Blue, Blue Guitar. Thomas, hey, nice thank, to meet you. Thank you so much for making the journey down. It's yeah. this is this is probably one of my favorite parts of the NAM show is connecting with people like Thomas and connecting with your friends that you see on the internet and then meeting the guys that build the stuff. Why? Um, right. How was the show for you? Great, great. Awesome. I have to say this was the best NAMM show I've been in my whole entire life. Wow. And I'm going to NAMM shows, I think, for 20 years. Wow. So it's growing and growing and it's so exciting. It, also for me, it's great to meet people like you and I wow. meet other amp manufacturers, I meet artists and yeah. uh, it's the place to be. It really felt like a great vibe to me yeah. that Last year definitely felt like a really good vibe, and this was the first year I was telling a friend that the it the positivity just increased. Yeah. It, it was so nice to see, and it was just yeah. I made I made the point actually. You guys have probably seen some of the Nam videos that have come out by now, and I intentionally didn't do a whole lot of content because I was more concerned with meeting people, and Thomas was one of those people, and here we are a few days removed from the NAMM show. He's brought uh, all the goods down here to the studio, and we're gonna, we're gonna take a little test drive of some of them. We're gonna talk tone. We're gonna try to get some unique sounds and, and get some things that would make me happy, but then also Thomas is gonna be doing a little playing on his very famous blue guitar Stratocaster. Um, but briefly, yeah. since I think we should talk about it, is you're definitely no noob to this industry. You've been doing stuff in this industry for quite some time. Yeah. So Cliff Notes version, tell the folks at home watching a little bit about what led you to where we are today with Amp One and Blue Guitar. Where I, um, as a teenager, I had two hobbies. My first hobby was electronics, um, and I was 11 starting okay. this. And my second hobby was playing the guitar at 14. Nice. So when I turned, uh, you know, into the phase where the guitar was exciting me so much, I kind of let the electronics down mm -hmm. because, you know, I didn't have the time and I had to finish school and I, everything was kind of endangered. I knew my parents kind of started <laughs> to freak. So I, I, I just finished school and then I became a professional musician for some reason. And then... Um, for some reason. Yeah, um, you know, it, 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 it simply happened to me. I was yeah. lucky, I was lucky, I have to say. And then um, at a certain point, I got hired by Jusen Kettner as a demonstrator. And then uh, since I was a, a technician myself, I, um, I had a few ideas and a few things that I thought could be improved. And I ended up as being a freelance guy in their R&D team for 27 years. And besides that, I worked for Steinberg Software, you know, the yes. recording guys from Hamburg, Germany, and, um, you know, some other companies. And I, I've done guitars in the UK with a brand called Vintage with Trevor yes, Wilkinson. Yes, Trevor Wilkinson. So, you know, I've been around. And He's then, been around. And then, um, yeah, finally in 2014, I founded my own company, Blue Guitar, with the idea of making, you know, the amps that I love so much, which are basically tube amps, yeah. <laughs> as we probably all do, yes, um, in the most compact, lightweight format, and using my nanotube technology, which is uh, a fully analog technology, which uses tubes and analog electronics, mm -hmm. um, but you know to get the the, the 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 weight down to two pounds. And, uh, you know, my first customer probably was Jennifer Batten. Yes, I remember seeing that. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and she, she, she came to my place and she was begging to buy the prototype and I refused to get her the prototype. <laughs> so, and he, here we are now. Yeah. And, and um, I have the M1 on the market now and I have a, a new version, um, which is the Iridium edition, which is black mm -hmm. for the metal guys. Mm -hmm. So the, the Mercury edition is kind of the second incarnation of M1 already. Mm -hmm. I started with the no-named, some people call it silver one, okay. um, or original, whatever it is. I, I still haven't decided what term to use. Yes. And now, now we have the, the Mercury, which is basically the same thing with a few tweaks. Um, and some people like the first one even better, and some people prefer the second one. Well, it's it's like the tube amps. Which one is better? You know, Boogie Mark One, Mark Two. It it's up to the player. Yeah, exactly. And what's exciting to me about this is, I I do remember it's probably the first 
place that I became aware of what you were doing yeah. was you did a video with Daniel Steinhardt from ah. the gig rig and that pedal show of from course. the UK yeah. yes and you he had brought you in and you were showing this off and you know I love pedals obviously there's sure. a show here called stomp box Saturday for a reason and the idea of putting a tube amp in a pedal, in a pedal yeah. which I had seen start to you know creep into the marketplace already but this was this was the full package this wasn't just a preamp this right. was an actual amp that you could take with a speaker cap right. plug in and that was the way to go yeah and it's just i feel the way that the the industry has kind of evolved we've needed to shrink down our rigs we've huh. needed to make things lighter and but this was the first one that i encountered that i felt like wow this actually ha has some good sound behind it yeah mostly i think because obviously of your your history in the industry but then also just the fact that it is the complete package right you know and we've got technology that we're all familiar with and that we all enjoy sure and the the, the thing about daniel was what i liked so much when he did the video he shot all his tube amps mm -hmm. and i was playing my amp one mm -hmm. so people got kind of got fooled, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it sounded like... Thinking like, oh, <laughs> is he playing that Vox AC30 yeah. or is he playing this and thing? And I wasn't. I yeah, wasn't exactly. Yeah. And then, not to mention, he did a little comparison video on the uh, Blue Guitar, I believe the Facebook page, yeah. where he's, uh, Thomas is A being an Amp 1 Mercury Edition with an AC15. Uh, the results, quite surprising. Yeah. Was definitely not <laughs> expecting that. Yeah. Um, but... Needless to say, the thing that I liked the sound better of was the the amp one. Nothing to discredit the Vox AC15. I, I hey, hey, but they are very close. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and exactly. Me, and my point was simply, hey, we have a, you know a hand wired all tube amp mm -hmm. versus a nano tube little pedal, and uh, it's so scary mm -hmm. in both ways. You yeah. Know? So hey. All good, all good. Exactly. Well, yeah. one of the things that we want to show you right now is we spent some time before the camera started rolling, going back and forth between my orange rocker verb and the amp one, trying to match things as closely as possible. And uh, I think we got pretty close. Yeah, we didn't use the AB switcher, which I usually do. Yeah. But just from, you know, going one amp and the other one, we, we are kind of in the same ballpark. Yeah, I think we are. So, uh, you know, what, <laughs> what we're going to do right now is we're going to go plug, right now we're plugged into the amp one. So I want to play you guys the clean tone that we got out of this. Um, we also have the Keeley fuzz bender uh, running in front of it because any good amplifier should be able to take a fuzz pedal. Mm -hmm. um, I want to show you guys these sounds that we've dialed in, but then I want to unplug from the amp one, go back to the orange and show you guys the sounds of that because I think we got really, really close. And it's something that it's a prospect that I'm quite excited about. So the setup okay. is basically going to be the guitar going into TC Polytune 2 on the floor, then the Keeley Fuzz Bender, and then into the Amp 1. We're going out of the speaker output of the Amp 1 to the Boss Tube Amp Expander, which all we're getting from that is we might be getting a little bit of delay later on in the video, and that is feeding directly to my orange PPC 212 cab with the Celestion Vintage 30s, trying to make this as close to the normal setup that I use for these videos as possible. So uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and tune up first because <laughs> God knows I'll get a comment about that. And then uh, let's check out these tones. Yeah. Now we hit it with the fuzz. <laughs> feeling pretty good let's try with the boost now yes. because i think it will speak a bit more let's maybe speak a little yeah. bit more let's uh let's maybe uh get a little bit more uh 
hard nosed on the picking. same time, let's also end of us. boost really just helps things bloom a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. So now we'll go over the dirty channel, turn off the boost on that. Now we chose to go with the modern voicing on this, obviously more of a modern player. The stuff that I like has some pretty hefty riffs, um, but uh, I think it works out really well personally. I think it captures all the qualities that I would want to get. And not only that, there's a noise gate on this. Yep. I did not know that. And that's until now. Until Wait. now. <laughs> until now. Hold on. There's some, well, anyway, time to play. Get on. Oh. Get rid of the rhythm now. Okay. <laughs> okay. You want that. Yeah. <laughs> So that's the noise gate on metal. And before we had it set on soft. Ah, now I can hear we. Ah, we have we have officially we, we, turned on the fan. Fan, the first time, and we we are running it at very high volume. You yes. Know? So before that, it was totally quiet. You know. And now we have the fan and, running because yeah, it's just so, like, bro, too hot right now. Yeah, he's, too hot right now. <laughs> he's sweating and he was sweating, and now it stopped already. Yes. Okay. Ah, but this is stage volume, yes. you know, what, what we kind of... Uh, Good tone makes me sweat, people. Okay, so now we have the orange plugged in, and now let's hear some of those sound samples, and I'll try to play the Similar. same <laughs> the same stuff. <laughs> oh, hopefully. Hopefully the tone wasn't so good that I completely lost myself. Ah, there's one mess up for today. I think we got really close on yeah, that one. It's not that far apart. Yeah, I think the one advantage with the with the amp one was we were maybe able to get a little bit extra sparkle without it getting like we're still able to maintain that little bit of grit. Yeah. Where it like really opens yeah. up and is really nice, but we could still have the get a little bit more sparkle out of it. So now over to the dirty channel. 
And then this is the sound of the rocker verb, Sturdy Channel. <laughs> judge amps on how well they handle fuzz Fuzz, pedals because so many don't so few really handle them well and i feel like you've successfully gotten the amp one to handle a fuzz pedal as well as the ultimate fuzz pedal amplifier in my opinion well i like fuzzes myself too there we go i I have a, a band called blue plays hendrix and guess what? I have to use fuzzes then. Yeah. <laughs> and if my amp wouldn't handle a fuzz, you know, I would be in that trouble. That would be a big problem. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. I, 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 I could wax poetic about this experience just doing this all day. But, however, I'm a different kind of player than Thomas, and I think it would be really fun to see what kind of stuff that he likes to do with his particular product, um, just because... We're all guitar players. And sure. We're all different. We all have our own, you know, personal sound ideas. And your sound's darker. I will be probably more mid rangey. Okay. Um, maybe too bright for your ears. But hey, this is this is cool. Exactly. Yeah. So let's let's grab that legendary Stratocaster. Let's plug that thing into this. Okay, on your cabinet and whatever. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I need my pick. Where's my pick? <laughs> That's what I am liking. I like a little bit of boost for extra sparkle. Yeah. So, another thing that I do like is crank the clean channel. Mm. And when while cranking it, I like to get my extra high end from this side. And then maybe a little bit here. Mm. So let's listen to this. All right. Here we go. This is like the Vox AC fifteen thirty yes. kind of thing. That's the kind of uh, breakup sound that I like. Uh, and, the, and the thing about this, I, I'm watching Thomas's right hand more than I'm watching anything else, and all of that variation in tone is coming from how he's picking the strings. From and his volume was up on yeah. ten during that whole little portion right yeah, there. Yeah. So this is ten. You yeah. Know, and then I I can go chime and you know that's the amp. So the amp goes into the saturation, and I can have. The yeah. So that's the. Will you, will you give me a little bit of neck pickup action on, sure. with that idea? Sure thing. Add mm. a little reverb. Ah. Get, get the metal gate off. So yeah. yeah. So I 
I like to work with the volume yeah. and, and the intensity. That's one way of doing it. Just one way. Yeah, of course. I could reduce the whole thing. And here is what I also like a lot. The vintage channel, since I'm, you know, a vintage guy. <laughs> um, let's start on a low setting. This is like the... Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah. yeah. Also, again, this nice breakup. Yeah. Know? And I have the boost, and I can turn the boost all the way up, which I usually do. And then it's um, it's without the boost, it's you know this crunchy tone. Something can still clean up. Yeah. And then when I bring in the boost, I have. A That's the game. Yeah. And then when I increase the gain on the M, uh -oh. I get into the Hendrix territory. <laughs> and this is my game is uh, using the volume control. So on low. <laughs> I stole this from Richie Blackmore. <laughs> Deep Purple, you know this? That's one of the cool things about getting to sit with another player who's in a completely different wheelhouse than you. It's just, but it's just like it's so amazing to watch and it's so amazing to hear because you say to yourself, "I wish I could do that." You can, but you can. I, I, maybe you know, maybe I give you a few hints of where you know get inspired. We can talk about that off camera. <laughs> the cool. people want to talk about the gear, I guess. Yeah, yeah, okay. Can I actually play that sound that you were just playing with, yeah, with sure. the Les Paul? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, let me take the cable from you. Yeah, okay. I just it's super noisy. Yeah, try this. Yeah, there we and go. Th this has a lot of gain on tap. So start at at, at almost. <laughs> Still clean. Yeah. So, and now play, and then. All on tap here. You know, you know. Guys, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's something I want you. I, I try to do with you guys on on every show is kind of open you guys up to these other worlds, and this is something that I feel like is a good example. I'm a modern guitar player. I like modern amplifiers. I'm into high gain things. However, this is a vintage voicing on this thing right here, and I am having a grand old time in <laughs> ten seconds. It is okay to try old things that are new again. Right. Please think about that. And this this is the vintage high gain from back in the 60s. You know, in the 60s, they did have the, the old tube amps, Marshalls, Voxes, whatever. Yeah. And then they had, uh, the, the, in the UK, they had the so-called range master treble booster. Mm, yes. Which is kind of a little bit what I'm doing with my boost. Mm -hmm. And this was getting the, the low end a bit tightened up and at the same time, a, a nice thing off the top end. If you listen to old school Peter Green, mm -hmm. who influenced like Carlos Santana, mm -hmm. he did all the stuff with the volume. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no channel switching no. back in the days. It was a big old Marshall stack yeah. cranked up all the way with one of those things just slam in the front end. And that was it? Yep. It was louder and louder. <laughs> There's a reason that 59 Les Paul is worth millions. Yeah. And it's because of stuff that he was able to do. <laughs> Ah, I, I think I turned.
turned you on into the vintage uh, world. Uh, feel, feel, <laughs> feels good. <laughs> We're <laughs> sitting here yeah. all day just doing little bluesy bends yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. it feels so good. So this is the Vintage Channel. Man, you just, like, I really, the only experience I had, and I told Thomas this before we got rolling, the only experience I had with this this Amp 1 was at the NAMM show plugged into headphones. Yeah. Hearing it plugged into a cab, mic'd up, and through the, st I, wow. Through your system, so you oh, know yeah. what you're getting. You yeah, know, this exactly. Was to get your reference point. Exactly. gonna be the most metal I get for like the next six months. This is really where I feel like the, the guitars can truly combat the terrible backline equipment uh, stigma that's out there. 